Thanks for tuning in to Markets IQ. I'm Neeraj Shah with me is Samina Nalwala and uh, we are in conversation uh, with Rajiv Juneja, Vice Chairman and MD of Mankind Pharma on the big news from last week about the acquisition that they have done and a sizable one at that. Uh, so let's figure out the details of this and what it will mean for mankind over the years to come. Rajiv, good having you. Thanks for taking the time out. This is Neeraj here. Good afternoon. Um, and congrats on this deal. Uh, but with the congratulations come the question about why why such an acquisition at the current point of time at the current valuations and the monies that you've paid. For that you're supposed to understand that uh, mankind has always uh, had very very clear kind of a strategy. Uh, on that strategy only, we have acquired this entity. Uh, just to go back and see many years, uh, 28 years back, our strategy was going bottom up, covering maximum number of doctors, three lakh doctors, four lakh doctors we cover right now. That was our way of creating some kind of a entry barrier. Going forward, the second step was in that clear strategy, uh, going for OTC, products, Manforce, Praga News, uh, health okay, gasofas, acne star, all sort of things are there in that. And creating some kind of a entity, some kind of a brand name for mankind. The next was uh, going in chronic side of the business that we did. Five years back, the fourth step was opening a new office and uh, starting only specialty uh, business from Mumbai in Onco, in Juro, in uh, diabeto, in cardio, all sort of things have, have been done. And naturally, the last step, uh, when you go on the top of the pyramid, you see that you want to enter a super specialty business. Because once you have a big company where approximately 22,000 people plus are working, it's like a castle and you want to have uh, all the protection, all the security for those who are working and some kind of a prosperity as well. So what you do, you create high walls, high entry barrier, trenches. I mean, those kind of products you want to acquire, which uh, are very, very difficult to make, which are very, very complex. Uh, some of the products in Bharat Serum are those products where nobody has, have, has been able to crack that. Uh, patent is there till uh, 28. Some of the antibites are there uh, where nobody is successful in making that. One product I want to mention that is anti-D. In India, approximately five to seven percent women have RS negative blood group. And whenever that happens and you want to become a mother, on the third trimester, you're supposed to definitely go for that anti-D injection. It is compulsory. And uh, in that, so that the next baby uh, uh, should not have any problem. I mean, problem of uh, brain damage, a problem of that, uh -huh. this uh, anemia, all sort of things are there. It's a very, very special kind of a company. And that's one reason we have uh, acquired this. So there is a very strong reason for that. Plus, a yeah. lot of uh, potential is there to unlock in this company. Uh, once you acquire this kind of a super specialty, entry barrier, uh, and a company which works in one area, which is growing at the fastest pace, mm -hmm. that is fertility. You go in any city nowadays, what do you see basically? Sure. And uh, fertility, fertility clinics. There was a time this phenomena was there in bigger cities. Now, even mid uh, smaller towns, you find that these kind of clinics are there. Mm -hmm. So in that way, I mean, uh, Bharat Serum is a very special company. And uh, that's one reason. So there's no other reason. I mean, uh, this is one company we were interested, very keen to acquire five years back as well. We could not succeed. So now uh, it's a different entity now in the last 25 years. The able, uh, nice, capable management has turned around this uh, Bharat Serum to a different kind of a company. And that's one reason we have paid this price. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I was about to ask you the same thing, that the premium that you're paying, uh, is it, does that come from the fact that they have specialized products and you mentioned the moat that you have and therefore you'll be able to, for lack of a better word, milk this opportunity a lot better over the next few years? Absolutely. I mean, uh, in five years' time, this uh, capable management has, has, has basically turned around man, uh, uh, Bharat Sira. But despite of that, just look at two years were lost in COVID as well. So there's plenty of potential to unlock. 
Uh, they have flavor of uh, OTC as well, where we are always very keen. Uh, they have some products. One is Osopan, one is Lactear for breast feeding mothers. Uh, so who knows tomorrow that these two products can be shifted to our consumer division side. So everything is there in this company. One is chronic, one is uh, a high entry barrier where we are very keen. Uh, it's not a branded generic, it's more than that. It is a super specialist entry barrier uh, company which uh, has a product range which is uh, there in uh, fertility site, in fertility site. Right, Mr. Janeja, hi, it's also Samina joining in. Uh, Mr. Janeja, the success of this m &A will sit on execution. And we've seen with Mankind Pharma, be it Dr. Reddy's Laboratories or Panacea Biotech, those are very successful acquisitions from your stable. Uh, you mentioned a couple of times that this company has been run extremely well and Advent has done a fantastic job. And while you eyed it when the Daftaris owned it five years ago, you didn't pick it up when it was 10x cheaper, right? Uh, will the management handhold you while you create success out of this business? Because if the synergies are there, sure, we take your point. But even the management, I believe, will play a critical role to make this a success for Mankind Pharma. So what for Mankind is famous? Uh, Mankind is famous for being a very, very people-centric company. Our attrition rate is minimum. I mean, uh, uh, some kind of a institutionalization has happened in Mankind in the last uh, couple of years. So naturally, uh, we have not bought uh, Bharat Serum as a company. We have bought Bharat Serum with capabilities, with management. Uh, so naturally, we'll like to retain that management we'll, and incentivize them and uh, hope that this will do fantastic. I remember very well when we bought uh, Panacea, people were asking questions that, uh, is it not expensive? But look at uh, Panacea, we have turned around Panacea to a different kind of a uh, organization, uh, growing at a pace of 20-25%. Why we bought Panacea? We had strong reasons for that. Every time, the clarity is always there. Panacea gave us entry into high entry barrier transplant business. That was one. They gave, Panacea gave us Sitcom, which is a patent product. Panacea gave us uh, anti-diabetic product, Glyzid. Uh, Panisha gave us, gave us uh, Nimulit, a product with a flavor of OTC. I mean, if you just multiply a few times, this is bigger version of Panisha. Rather, I'll say much better than, better than that. Right, uh, that's your new child, uh, Rajiv, and I'm, we are sure that you're going to make this a success. You've shown that in the past, and I'm, we wish you luck with that. But let's break this down, right? The top line of your company stands about 10,000 or crores. Uh, BSV is close to 1,700 crores. Now, what are your plans? Let's lay this out, because while we'll talk about how you're going to raise the funds and what it does to your debt-equity ratio, uh, talk to me about where do you see mankind and BSP's contribution to mankind's top line over the next three to five years? What we see basically, I mean, Bharat the Serum uh, as a independent entity has a potential to become a company of uh, uh, four to 5,000 crore rupees. Uh, the top line uh, growth of uh, Bharat Serum is more than mankind. The EBITDA of Bharat Serum is more than mankind. Uh, they have very special products. In some of the products, they have the almost the monopoly. In few of the products, only two, three competitors are there. We see this company would be adding a lot of value to us. Apart from this, they have certain products in the pipeline, uh, in the R&D facility. If they unfold in coming years, uh, we will be in different league altogether. So we see a uh, lot of synergies will happen. A lot of uh, good things will happen. Mankind, Bharat Mankind would be a different kind of a company. Plus, uh, not to forget that now Mankind becomes a, a number one company in Kinetic side, women healthcare side, with the addition of Bharat Serum products. Got it. Okay. Um, very, very keen to know whatever little you can tell us about um, how you would fund this, because there are two or three elements to this, right? You have an enabling resolution for a QIP, a higher fundraise, my analyst, Varsha's math suggests that you would probably raise about 6,000 crores of debt for this. Um, and, and when does the equity raise also happen, of course, uh, in order to either fund this deal or have the necessary equity for the deal and otherwise? First of all, uh, you should really know that both these companies generate a lot of cash. Right. 
So these both companies are cash generating company, companies. So approximately 4,000 crore rupees would be coming from uh, internal accruals. And from uh, as far as the rest is concerned, majority would be debt, minority would be equity. I mean, uh, at the right time, we'll talk about that. But yes, in the vicinity of 20, 30% would be QIP, I mean, uh, equity, and the rest would be debt. That's the right now plan. Uh, let's see what happens in future. How fast can can we turn around things? Uh, how something nice happens and uh, <laughs> but Raji, happens. but Raji, when does this equity fundraise happen? I mean, now that you laid out the percentages, we'll do the math, which is fine. But when does this equity raise happen? Yeah, I mean, uh, in the next three to four months' time, we'll uh, complete the transactions. Uh -huh. Right after this, all these things will happen. Right. So we still have four months to really, I mean, complete all the processes. So, Janeja, just uh, help us understand on the debt quotient that you would look to raise uh, to, of course, acquire BSV. Uh, your leverage cost will increase significantly in the near term. Can you help us with what your cash flow to EBITDA stands at and how comfortable would the position be? Because I know you've gone on record to say that you won't let your debt equity go any higher than two times. Yeah, absolutely. We, we are totally unsure about that. I mean, uh, as far as every time we gen, I mean, uh, cash generation is 70% to EBITDA. So, comfortable over the next 6 to 12 months to furnish the leverage that you're taking on, Mr. Janeja? No concerns and no worries there and you don't expect the board to have any problems with that either, right? No, no. Everything has been done uh, with the approval of board only. I mean, was, every, everybody is very, very confident. See, I mean, uh, more than anything else, uh, what we are looking at, long-term things, always. And uh, our debt to EBITDA would be, I mean, not more than two times that we are very conservative about, very yeah, concerned but, about. So, Janija, let's talk business now. Your, uh, I believe the EBITDA margins for PSV is about 28% while for mankind it's about 25 percent where will your blended margin stand uh, in the next uh, one to two years see i mean uh, uh, let me i mean uh, tell you i mean our EBITDA uh, range basically is 25 to 26 in mankind alone but we hope that we'll be touching the upper limit 26 that's basically is a call in mankind would be doing as far as uh Bharat serum is concerned i mean this year only their uh hopefully their beta would be 30 percent so when you make a math we'll be doing much better than what we're doing right now okay but okay just wondering my my final question actually rajiv uh, uh, i believe you are at 28 and correct me if i'm wrong and uh, or rather this thing this thing is 28 percent margins if i if i ignore the one-offs for bsv you mentioned 30 odd percent is this purely coming from internal efficiencies or do you have to strive hard in order to take the margins for bsv higher and therefore the part two of my question is would your console margins stay at about 25 odd percent that's the number that we are working with when we are trying to pencil in what could mankind do over the next couple of years we are very, very uh, uh, pragmatic in our approach that uh, as far as Bharat Siram is concerned, uh, that would be touching around uh, 30 percent. Uh, and as far as the mankind is concerned, separate entity mankind, uh, not 25, but definitely 26 or closer to 26. So when you make a math, we'll be doing better than what we have said. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mr. Janeja, another last question before we wrap this one up. Uh, have you already appointed the bankers or the consortium of bankers that are helping you fund this deal? Because this is significant money you're looking to raise through the debt route as well. I will not like to comment on that, I mean, but things are done internally. And what would the timeline be about three to six months for everything to get done? Because while I know the board's approved it, I'm guessing there still be clearances uh, that may just be required, uh, you know, for the, for the headline value of it. But uh, how long do you anticipate this integration to be at least completed in terms of all the paperwork? Three, four months. Hopefully three, four months. Yeah. Hopefully three, four months. Good luck, Mr. Janeja. It's great talking to you. Congratulations on this big win and good luck with business. And we'll hopefully connect back in a couple of months to get a better sense of what's happening. Thank you very much. Good talking to you. Likewise. Have a good day. Well, Neeraj, this is a big one. It's a, it's a day of deal making, right? Paying a premium, <laughs> getting a deal. You have Ultratech and India Cement. Yeah. You have uh, Mankind. Mankind was a big one last week as well. So it's been exciting times yeah. for sure. But 
Well, uh, confident about 30% margins as well, Mankind Pharma, and um, well, some contributions from BSV increasing over a period of time. Well, we slip into a break. On the other side of the break, while this was a great conversation, 